OK, here's a question. How many ways can I rearrange the letters of the word, or word, cheesiestness? The quality of being the cheesiest of the cheeses of all. Hmm. OK, first of all, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 letters long. If those letters were distinct, I know the answer would be 16 factorial. However, there's some repeat going on. Uh, there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, if these E's were distinct, I'd have 16 factorial answers. But if I remove the distinction from the E's, the answers will collapse by a factor of all the ways to rearrange 5 E's. This is only a little task problem. 5 factorial ways. That's for the E's. And uh, S's. There's some repeat S's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 repeat S's. Then those answers, if I remove subscripts from the S's, will collapse by a factor of 6 factorial. That is, divide the answer by 6 factorial. So there it is. There are 16 factorial divided by 5 factorial, 6 factorial ways to work out, the, the, to rearrange the letters of the word cheesiestness. I'm right, there's no other repeat letters. Okay. Oh, though, since I'm not very good at catching my own errors, I'm going to incorporate a little self-check here. For example, how many C's were there? There was one C. We had five E's, we were at five factorial. We had six S's, we were at six factorial. Let me write one factorial for the letter C. No harm in that, because one factorial is just one, which is actually an interesting question. I hope you read the text in the previous lesson about factorials. Um, so I could write one factorial on the bottom for C, no harm done. And for the H's, I could also write one factorial for the H's. E's I've got, there's an I, one factorial for the I. Uh, E's I've got T's, one factorial for the T's. Uh, E's S N's, one factorial for the N's. In fact, that's it. And here's a nice little self-check. 16 factorial, that 16 came from 16 letters. Five E's, six uh, S's, one, 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 one. That's one, two, three, four, five, plus six is 11. This, another five is 16. Yep. All 16 letters are accounted for in that denominator. I have no shame in writing lots of one factorials because then I get an answer whose numbers on the bottom without the factorials should add up to the numerator on the top without the factorial. Great, lovely self-check. But now I'm going to get playful. How many E's were there? Five. How many S's were there? Six. How many H's were there? One. How many T's were there? One. How many P's in this word? Well, number of P's is zero. So oh, I better put zero factorial on the bottom for the count of P's. Oh, there are no X's in this word. I better put, also put zero factorial on the bottom for the count of X's. Whoa, now I'm being crazy. So even if I start accounting for letters that aren't in this word, what could I do for zero factorial? What's a meaningful value for zero factorial that would make my formulas work even if I started being silly this way? Well, now, zero factorial in itself, in it of itself, does not make sense. Multiplies all numbers from 1 up to 0. Makes no sense. However, in this context, I seem to want to give zero factorial a, a, a value so that it works. And clearly, I don't want to ruin my formula. This tells me it would be convenient to set zero factorial to equal 1. So even if I'm being silly, by defining, by declaring, just making a social convention, this is a social convention, to make zero factorial equal to one, even my formulas would be correct if I started putting in counting P's, X's and W's and Z's that aren't in that word. Brilliant. In fact, mathematicians do do this just to save them some trouble. When I'm writing a paper and I'm writing some form in a number theory and I count the number of ways to do something, I'd hate to have my theorem have to go through all the different cases. And if it turns out there are no, none of these guys, then my formula should be rewritten this way. And if it turns out there are none of these other guys, then my formula should be written this other way. It's so much easier just to agree, let's make zero factorial equal to one so my one formula works in all cases, even when my count is zero of them. So here's the reason why mathematicians set zero factorial equal to one. It makes no sense according to the definition of factorial. It's a social convenience, so my formulas work no matter what. And again, look at my denominator, all the numbers 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 6, 5, still add up to 16, it passes my self-check. Brilliant. So I'm going to follow that practice that when I rearrange letters of words, all I'm going to do is put the count of letters on the top as if all the letters were distinct, and then have a denominator that matches that count on the top by counting how many of each letter there are. And if it turns out there are none of them, I'm not going to fret about it. My formula is still grand. Love this stuff. Great.